Still want our hands in first possession out of their own defensive zone. They finish with the number two overall seed in the section here. Chance now for new power from a sharp angle. Bees has to make an early save. Now we have a stoppage in play, a faceoff coming in the Stillwater defensive zone again. We apologize for not starting with the contest here tonight. We had some issues and we were expecting a national anthem. None came. And so sure enough, here we are. So alongside the beautiful Allison Volk, I'm Alex Westhead. And Allison. Decisive wins for both of these teams out of the corner final round. White Bear Lake over Woodbury, Stillwater over Rose Bowl. But these two teams split a pair of matchups earlier in the season. Yeah, the biggest thing is for White Bear Lake to start out strong. They've had some slow starts to, to, uh, to their games this season, whereas Stillwater seems to come out a little bit stronger than them. But then White Bear Lake seems to wake up, so Stillwater's got to be careful for that uh, late game pushback. Goaltending matchups, which we'll get statistically in a minute. It's a pair of 30s as Logan Bees faces off against Tyler Steffens. Big check right at the officials. Semi-circle here at Aldrich Arena. Again, it's a pretty darn near capacity crowd. Lots of orange, lots of red in the stands. And we're happy that you're joining us on tape delay here on SEC TV Sports for this very special contest here tonight. Puck taken here on the near side of wing. It's gotten to further over Kirky lost the puck battle there. Can be taken into the offensive zone by Evan Murr. Murr, who was slowed up here. O'Brien will flip it off the glass. Up through to center, delayed offsides call. It's taken away this time and a chance for Tristan Johnson. The Bears have shaken up their line since last we saw them. As that was a shot from a sharp angle from Billy Rose, second on the team in goals, leading point assist man from the wing for White Bear Lake. As the puck goes off the stick that time, trying to sneak around with Michael Sweetland. He was the starting center for Stillwater and the Ponies here tonight. As the puck can go back into the White Bear Lake zone, Stefan will stop it behind his own net. A chance for Joe Fratellone now. Fratellone lost the handle there briefly. Another turnover, a dangerous chance now for Stillwater as they try to center the pass in front. Johnson centering pass in front for Sweetland. Oh, what a good defensive play that time by Nicky O'Brien to take that chance away. Checking to the end boards, wide open in the slot is a pony. He gets a shot off, and Stefan's has to make the save. Big drive from the blue line. Well, high into the stands off the stick of Robert Dustin, and we'll have a face off. And already the ponies. Showing some pressure in the offensive zone for the Bears. Yeah, a couple uh, poor uh, defensive turnovers for White Bear Lake, but they did a good job of recovering, getting their sticks in the lane, and making sure that the, the shots that Stillwater got were off the mark or just were poor chances. This is the 2-3 three, uh, three matchup between Stillwater and White Bear Lake. The winner will get the Hill Murray Pioneers as they defeated Moundsview and the Mustangs by a final of 6-2 earlier today. Again, the section here being played. Nice little stick handle that time by Tyler Showers. The puck going into the zone. Kuyaba applying pressure to try to get on it, but Evan Murrow is able to take it away. Now the rush on the far wing for the Stillwater Ponies. Under first year head coach Greg Zanin on the icing call coming here again. Greg Zanin, former NHL player. He played for Minnesota in the wild. He also played for the Colorado Avalanche, among other stops, and certainly as an assistant coach in years previous in the Stillwater Pony system. His first year in Stillwater as the head coach following Matt Doman has been quite a success. Yeah, there's always something to be said when your coach is a, as a former NHL player. I think you get the, get the kids' ears a little bit more when you have that pedigree coming in. Ponies came into this one with a record of 19-6-1. 14, 3 and 1 out of the Suburban East. Very difficult conference. That was good for second behind the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders, who fell to Benilde St. Margaret's in the semifinal round out of Section 6 AA. Top in the corner now. Shower gets a big check that time from a dangerous angle. Another check back the other way. Key to the game for White Bear Lake, as we've saw a number of times as Allison has been the clock operator for me in the White Bear Lake penalty box. White Bear Lake has to stay out of the penalty box here tonight. Yeah, that's a big thing. And then if they do get in the penalty box, their uh, their penalty kill needs to come up strong. Ooh, the big chance there for them right there. Um, but yeah, that has killed them a couple times this season being in the box. For Kirky, oh, try to get it to road from a sharp angle. It's no good as it goes up into the stands. We'll have a face off. 14:09 here in the opening period. On the other side of the tape for White Bear Lake. Last time we were here, White Bear Lake Hill Murray, a goal in the last minute to tie it. And then a power play goal by Billy Rose to win it. Since then, it's been kind of a different story for White Bear Lake. Yeah, they kind of been up and down. Um, 
I'm not really sure if there's just there's look lack of consistency there. Um, but hopefully they can uh, turn it around here and play when it matters. On January the 2nd of this year, White Bear Lake was a number one ranked team. According to Let's Play Hockey, as a centering pass in front for Road is intercepted and be taken back the other way by Ryan Roski. Roski will flip it in as the ponies will go into chase. O'Brien gets to it first for White Bear Lake. Tying up with Roski is Luke Olives, many of the one of the 12 seniors on this White Bear Lake roster. Now a two on a three on two rush back the other way. Road le left it for Verkirky, who spun around. Verkirky trying to get it for this time. Sam Newpower holds his own. We'll send it in front. Nobody's there and can be taken here by Joe Manning. Manning a pass off the stick of Newpower right in front of the White Bear Lake bench. Goes past Alles. Where Leighton Road will pick it up off the, his own half wall. Trying to go further now. Road takes it away. Skating here on the near wing as the lines change for White Bear Lake. Sharp angle shot for Road hit the pad, but it was wide, so no official shot on goal there. And now a rush back the other way for the Ponies is into the zone. Joe Manning, Manning trying to get around the check, and Nikki O'Brien will get to it first. Coming here to the near side, Tristan Johnson. Johnson trying to flip it up for Rose, but it's taken away on a good defensive effort briefly before it can be flipped out. Here's Grant Hofeld coming to the University of Georgia to play golf is Grant. Among several of these seniors starting to wade their options together. As, uh, in on the four check here, Tristan Johnson centering pass for Hofeld. has got to by Fratalone, but he lifts it high. And another good chance for the Bears wide open in the slot to start this game. Yeah, that's a tough one. Wide open shot, you got to get that on net, even if it's, you know, low hard shots. That way your forwards can clean up the rebound there. But so far, this has been a pretty good game, pretty good back and forth with no team uh, taking control of it yet. For White Bear Lake, that game on the second against Irondale or it was a 4-1 final where Elijah Costa just played very, very well in net for the Knights. It was a, a different ball game, and it just felt different as this will not be icing as it goes back here, and a chance now as it can be taken out back the other way here for Stillwater as they'll go back to the far wing. Ronald Donar. Again, a lot of experience on the Stillwater Pony teams. A couple of Division I commits, too, is Noah Tussie, number seven for Stillwater, committed to the University of Minnesota as a junior. No Division I commits on the White Bear Lake roster, however, a lot of talent. And on the four check, Billy Rose, one of four captains here for White Bear Lake this season. It's taken away now by Johnson, who tries to chip it further for Rose, as Rose will skate through traffic, trying to leave it for Hofel, and Rose will simply dump it into the opposite corner. And we're going to have a whistle as the play was offside. One change made to Aldrich Arena. We mentioned it at the White Bear Lake Hill Murray game back in December. That extra three feet of glass all the way around certainly allows players to do more with it in the neutral zone. Yeah, allows them to just kind of uh, bank the puck off the glass and keep it in play and keep it going. Um, it's definitely an advantage for both teams. Face off here at Neutralize, it's won by Stillwater. A very strong team on the face off dot here for are the Stillwater Ponies. Zach Kuyaba takes it away. Four year player on varsity for White Bear Lake as a senior. And it goes back into the defensive zone where Tyler Steffens can stop it. Steffens, the varsity starter for most of the year. I believe he started every game. Wristed shot from the blue line goes wide. It can be taken here by Stillwater from a sharp angle. Steffens has to make a tough save. And the puck taken here again by Stillwater as they'll work in their white jerseys. New jersey combinations for the Stillwater Ponies wearing a mostly white and black uniform. Pony logo on the center crest with a Minnesota State outline for the Pony logo and a shot from a sharp angle. There goes high over the net, can be taken back here as Leighton Road tries to send it back out there to center, goes back into the defensive zone. Cade Cody Tech further now for Joe Montgomery. Montgomery will wait for the lines to change. He'll reset, sending it off the end boards into the attempt. offensive zone for Ethan Murky. Chance now, new power score! when scoring the first goal of the hockey game this season, 15-2-1. In all contests, they scored the first goal a lot. And now there's a conversation between the officials at the bench with the head coach of the Bears, Tim Sager. As four-section play at Aldrich Arena, there is a goal light judge sitting on the goal line just to watch to make sure that the goal to the puck does cross the net. One of the changes here from the regular season to the postseason. And a great start to the contest here tonight as White Bear Lake leads one to nothing. 
Yeah, it's been great ba play back and forth um, so far. Neither team is really taking too much control. Uh, each team has had a little bit of sustained pressure in their offensive zones, but so far it's been a great game back and forth. So we have a timeout here with 11-10 remaining in the first period. Again, the conversation extended with the public address announcer, Kirk Possell, and the clock operator, John. I'm afraid I don't know his last name. I've worked with him for two years. No idea what his last name is. As well as Corey on the scorebook. As a conversation, you hear the chant, let's play hockey, as we take a look at head coach Tim Sager for the White Bear Lake Bears, his 18th season. 331 wins as head coach of the White Bear Lake Bears, and certainly as. And now the goal is official, it does count as the officials go over to Greg Zanin on the other side. He made the comment last year that he has a little less hair on his head than he did when he started. And it's perhaps games and situations like this that would cause that, but he has been the model of consistency and coaching for the White Bear Lake Bears in their program. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the officials were discussing. If they're trying to make a call to Toronto or what, but they seem to got the, the call right. So the face off at center ice again. Road wins it back to Alas and further here for Brady O'Brien. The Civ chant, a popular one here for high school students as it goes back into the offensive zone off of a skate of a pony. Again, these two teams put up a lot of goals when they played each other in the season. It was a 4-3 final at the Vadna Sports Center on January the 9th, and then a 7-4 final at the St. Croix Valley Rec Center back in that last week of the regular season. Chance now from O'Brien, hit a stick in front, and Logan B is able to make the save for Stillwater. We'll have a defensive zone draw with 10.46 remaining. The goaltender for Stillwater today is number 30, Logan Bees. He's a senior, 11-5 record with a goals against of 223 and a save percentage of 904 and one shutout on the regular season. He yielded one goal against Roseville last Saturday in the quarterfinal round. And so far he has yielded exactly that. The Ponies, both teams playing in this contest tonight, Allison, gave up the first goal of the game as a chance now here for Tristan Johnson. Johnson trying to center front, goes back to Nikki O'Brien. O'Brien down and low, looking for the tip play for Johnson's no good. Rose further now for Hofeld, who takes a sustained check. Look and stick in front, and unable to get the shot on goal was Tristan Johnson. Hofeld working down and low. It's Nikki O'Brien once again from the corner. O'Brien sent further now here, Johnson. Johnson. Taken here, the Stillwater Ponies have played a very physical style of play for many, many years. As Hofeld, it's for Stillwater, it's going to be Robert Dustin without a stick. Oh, and the centering pass, no good. Down the length of the ice. It won't be icing as it came off a bear. Stephens will play from the corner. Lost the handle on it, first to it on a good back check play that time was Joe Fratellone. A chance now for the Ponies as they'll retake over. Back to the blue line. Here's Ty Tichito going D to D. Nice block that time by Hofeld as it hits off the half wall glass. Pass flipped up, had Rose streaking through center ice, unable to get it on. And now a chance here is Ethan Murky. Murky's got a goal here at Aldrich Arena already this year. He scored the first one against Hill Murray. Right on goal for Bees, and still sitting there in the blue paint. More chaos in front of the net before the Ponies are able to send it down as Ronald Donar sends it down the length of the ice. We'll have another defensive zone draw coming in the Stillwater end. And if you're a White Bear Lake fan, you love the pressure that the Bears have been putting on. Yeah, that goal seemed to really energize the, the White Bear Lake Bears right now. They are definitely putting a lot of pressure on in the offensive zone, uh, getting a lot of good chances and creating chaos in front of Bees. 9.29 remaining. Opening period. Here, White Bear Lake and Stillwater. The teams last met in playoff action back in 2016 in the semifinal round again here at Aldrich Arena, where it was a 4 to nothing Stillwater Pony victory that day. And what would be a section final to remember for Stillwater as they would go on to advance to the state tournament. Meanwhile, a rush back the other way. Three on three through neutral ice into the attacking zone. Tyler Shower from the far wing. It's the blocker that time of Bees goes into the netting and would we'll have another face off in the defensive zone. Once again, White Bear Lake's just doing a good job of putting pressure on. Even when they do get back in their zone, they're having a great breakout right now and just being able to march down the ice. Scores in progress right now, and again, by the time that this airs, it'll all be irrelevant. Matamidi has defeated Tartan in the 4A semifinal. They'll advance to play the winner of St. Paul Academy, South St. Paul. Right now, St. Paul Academy leading the Packers of South St. Paul by a score of one to nothing. And other scores certainly to follow. Bristed shot off the face off, one by White Bear Lake as they'll maintain pressure in the zone. One of the things that we talked about on our way over to the ring today is how sometimes White Bear Lake had slow starts in games this season. So far, what has been working for White Bear Lake where they've been able to get a good start off? 
just seems that they're just having in their mindset just to go in and just start playing right away. Um, you know, that, that goal really seemed to energize them, put a lot of energy into them so they could take control of this game. It kind of put Stillwater back on their heels, and they're not letting their foot off the gas. That's the biggest thing. Sometimes teams take their foot off the gas, they let their guard down, and all of a sudden it's a tie game again. 8.44 remaining. Another chance here in the offensive zone. Fan off of a stick from the ponies as they'll skate back through, neutralized out of their own defensive zone. Nice forechecking there by Leighton Road as the puck can be carried in now again. Sam Newpower has the white bear leg go for Fur Kirkke. A shot on Bays and it goes back to the blue line. Going back to get it now is Brady O'Brien, one of the seniors for White Bear Lake. As it goes back through to neutralize, it's dumped in here as Noah Tussie gets on to the sheet for the first time tonight. So Bears look to start their breakout. So far, four to one shots on goal favor. White Bear Lake here at 8-12, remaining in this opening period. Here's New Power. Comes here on the near side, looking for Alice. We'll flip it back in as he crossed the red line, and the White Bear Lake lines will change. Behind the net, it'll be Robert Dustin to maintain. Dustin looking to start the breakout here. Certainly taking, taking plenty of time for the Stillwater Ponies. As Dustin, kind of a bobbled snap there. <laughs> And it allows the Bears to continue to apply this four check. Camden Benson sent further along that time as Robert Dustin trying to start this breakout. And again, the Ponies unable to get the breakout. Now they're finally able to do so. It's taken in. Good check that time by Grant Hofeld. Fatalone going back defensively for Nicky O'Brien. Pass further up ahead down the length of the ice. This will be icing as it was looking for Tristan Johnson or Billy Rose on that far side. We'll have a face off in the White Bear Lake end. That's looking like Stillwater has a little bit of nerves maybe now, uh, not getting down 1-0 early, uh, kind of put them back on their heels. Um, we'll see what they can do to see if they can maybe put a little pressure on White Bear Lake, but right now the game is all White Bear Lake. The Section 4 AA bracket, a few new teams in there. Eastridge coming over from Section 3 AA, and not on there due to the fact that they were the nine seed was the Minnehaha Academy Red Hawks, the former North St. Ha uh, North St. Paul High School program and a turnover here right off the half wall centering pass blocked in front and a nice job at that as Billy Rose will carry it back out for White Bear Lake. Off the half wall, this might be on B's, but no, it'll be icing. Now have another face off in the White Bear Lake zone. Yeah, there's another uh, breakout by White Bear Lake that looked like it was gonna be successful, but that pass off the boards was just kind of too far ahead of, um, is it Billy Rose there? Um, so it's icing. Scoring leaders for White Bear Lake, Leighton Road had 22 goals in the regular season. He had a goal last Saturday in the quarterfinal round against Woodbury. Billy Rose with 32 assists on the year, centering pass, working in front, trying to get the wrap around, but unsuccessful on that, Evan Murr. His puck taken away, trying to get to it is O'Brien, who's tangled up this time with Ronald Donar. Oh, a good couple of stick <laughs> pressure there by Michael Sweetland as the puck goes all the way back, back to the blue line. Good check by Hofeld, the four seed. Turnover there, goes off to the half wall. Pinned in on the far side, though. Fratalone applying some defense. We'll go back here now for the chance with Michael Sweetland. Sweetland lost the puck. Can be carried further now as it's Ronald Donar. The starting lineup's back out there for Stillwater. All the way back now to the blue line where Grant Miller pinched down from the defense for the Ponies. The tie there, that's going to be a penalty. Thank you. Hey. Definitely can't do that. You see the guy's numbers. There's no reason to uh, cross-check someone on the back like that. That's how uh, injuries happen like Zach Parisi's. Michael Sweetland will go to the box for checking Tristan Johnson from behind. Might be boarding, too. I'm not really sure what they're going to call it. Two minutes is put up. And Michael Sweetland to the box. Two minutes for interference? Is Whatever the call. works. Either way, it's a penalty. Regular season power play for White Bear Lake. They scored at 25.8% uh, clip. Meanwhile, on the other side for the Stillwater Ponies, they had a penalty kill that worked fairly efficiently. 88.9% of penalties were killed in the regular season for Stillwater. Chance now for White Bear Lake. Rose, I'm sorry, Road on the far wing. Sent down and low for Rose. Back for Road again at the far circle. Ooh, a little give and go play set there. Ooh, centering pass in front is no good, but Hofeld able to hold the possession. Grant Hofeld, shook, oh! <laughs> Grant Hofeld with a rip, two nothing Bears. That was a great job by Hofeld there to take that puck that bounced off his teammate's skate and just kind of circle around the top of the circles and just fire it home. So the first shot on the power play for White Bear Lake gives them the goal. 
Two to nothing, White Bear Lake leads this 3-2 matchup. Again, the winner of this one will go on to play the Hill Murray Pioneers coming up on Friday evening. Again, both teams played Hill Murray earlier in the season. White Bear Lake won in their matchup, but Stillwater fell 5-1 to one to the Pioneers at the St. Croix Valley Rec Center. Meanwhile, back at action here, puck goes down to the offensive corner on the forecheck, Sam Burkirke. Burkirke tying up two on to his side. It can be gotten here to the further along now for New Power. Who had the first goal late, wrote a shot, missed the glove of Bees wide to the right. Held in now a chance, O'Brien wrist shot, big rebound, another big rebound, and a couple of chances that time for Sam Burkirke in close. New Power. Forced to turn over there, spinning chance that time for Rode. It goes back out to neutralize where O'Brien will flip it in as the White Bear Lake lines can change. White Bear Lake's doing a great job of sustaining pressure in their offensive zone right now. They're definitely not taking their foot off the gas. Um, of course, as they say, a two goal lead's the most dangerous lead in hockey. This is the time that you definitely don't want to let up uh, because as soon as you give up that one goal, all of a sudden the team thinks they're back in the game. Again, the good pressure from White Bear Lake here. Three men in on the four check. We take it up here as O'Brien will tap on the far side with Ryan Roski. Puck comes back here near side, goes back into the White Bear Lake end, where it can be taken here now. Luke Alles. Alles skating through neutral ice into the offensive zone. Alles has some opportunity on the wing. He's rubbed off there. That time as it goes right into the corner. Puck can be held in now and a chance here for Tyler Shower. Shower, who missed the entirety of his junior year due to injury as a centering pass on. Bees has to make the save. Shower missed the entirety of his junior year. has come back and made an impact. Ethan Murky now, the junior, trying to center that pass. No good as the ponies are able to take it away. 2 to nothing. the score here with 4.20 and counting remaining. 8-2, to two, the shots on goal favoring White Bear Lake at this point in time. As the puck goes all the way back now, Rose had a turnover here, and we're going to have a whistle as offsides was called. We'll have the faceoff back in neutral ice with 4.10 remaining here in the opening period. Yeah, White Bear Lake's just once again doing a great job of sustaining pressure. Um, it was a really back and forth game until White Bear Lake kind of scored, until they scored that goal and kind of took the win out of Stillwater Sales. Face off won by White Bear Lake. I'd be curious to know what the face off stats are so far. It's Kate Cody Tech. His mom, Lori, is one of the uh, office said. assistants at the middle school at the north side of White Bear Lake. Turnover now, Tristan Johnson. Johnson sent down and low, was looking for Rose as the puck taken away now here by Stillwater as we'll send the puck back in. Ponies trying to clear the zone, unable to do so though as Cody Tech holds the zone. Sent down and low, Billy Rose has it hop over his stick where now the Ponies can take it back out. Henry Lawrence trying to carry it in, but a good forecheck that time by Montgomery. Hofeld tied up here in the near side. This can be sent in further by Tristan Johnson, trying to work through, hit off the leg of Rose and then back off of Nick Dario. As the puck goes back into the corner again. Impressive this White Bear Lake forecheck in the first stanza. It, they're doing a great job of forcing uh, Stillwater to make some uh, turnovers in the defensive zone, and they're also keeping the puck in the zone around that blue line. Two on one rush if they hurry. Tristan Johnson, Grant Hofeld. Johnson tried to pass for Hofeld. Picked up by Rose. He scores! 13 minutes in, three goals for White Bear Lake. Hofield might try to say he did that on purpose. Left it there, right there for Billy Rose. Three oh three remaining. Billy Rose on the board, and completely unexpectedly. I mean, look at that shot. Perfect. Bees well out of position, and he couldn't push over back in time. Somehow, White Bear Lake up three to nothing over Stillwater. Here in the early going. I might say Tristan Johnson might have said that uh, he did that on purpose. Personally whipped on the pass with a shot there for Billy Rose. Billy Rose, 15 goals in the regular season. He had one against Woodbury. Centering pass in front as the Bears look to continue to pour it on. Here on the near side, Luke Alice does a great job of holding his own. Redirection play in front was looking for Road. It's no good. Road. Tied up into the corner, can be taken back here by Stillwater as he'll skate it back out. Ronald Donar trying to get around pressure. Luke Alla is going back to receive. Here now in a chance for uh, new power for Verkirke as the Bears skate three on the near wing. Verkirke left it for Road from a sharp angle. Blocker save that time by Bees who reaches and freezes. Now we'll have another face off coming into Stillwater and 220 remaining in the first period. Shots on goal 10 to 2 White Bear Lake. Score overall 3 to nothing. The Bears on top of Stillwater. 
You're just speechless right now, aren't you? I think, <laughs> I think coming into this one, much of the high school league would be. I don't think anyone expected three goals in the first period. Not for one team, though. New power, Hofeld and Rose, the goal scorers here for White Bear Lake. Ponies trying to clear it back out through center, goes right into the official's crease, can knocked off the stick that time of Fred alone as the puck sent back through the center. Chance now for Stillwater is tied to Cheeto in and a shot right into the blocker. Who an acrobatic stick save that time from Tyler Steffens, who has not been pressured much here in this first period. Puck goes to the half wall, trying to get it out that time. Ethan Murky on the four check. This goes well over high into the stands, behind the end boards. Can be taken here now and a chance for Tyler Shower, who cuts back. Pinned up along the boards, two on one. The Bears have the advantage there. Now an assister comes in there as the Bear fans look for a penalty there. Shot on goal right into the glove of Tyler Steffens through a screen. Or hold on, we'll have another face off in the White Bear Lake end with a buck 39 remaining in period number one. Yeah, there's a little bit of pressure there by Stillwater. Um, being, it, being put in on White Bear Lake, we'll see how White Bear Lake responds. But once again, White Bear Lake just needs to remember not to take their foot off the gas. Uh, three goal lead it can really easy to kind of get cocky uh, when you have that lead but we'll see what happens face off to the left of Steffens he's made four saves on the evening on four shots puck flip back out through to neutralize can be gotten to again here by Joe Manning onto the far wing back into the White Bear Lake defensive end Kate Cody Tech beaten to that puck that time by Nick Dario Z. Play off the end boards. Dario has it trying to center, but a good defensive play that time by Tristan Johnson. As the buck can be taken away. He'll go DDD this time for Cody Tech. Skate Cody Tech skating through neutral ice. Flips the puck off the glass. Carried into the attacking zone here. Offside, though, it looked like it was real close. And that's exactly what we'll get. Neutral zone face off of coming a minute and 10 remaining. Shots 10 to 4 favoring White Bear Lake. A little bit of sustained pressure that Stillwater has had. Wiper Lake's done a really good job of keeping their uh, their forwards to the outside and giving them low danger shots. There was one time where Stillwater player was able to cut in on uh, Steffens, but after since then they've been done a really good job of protecting their their house. White Bear Lake in the regular season 17, 8, and 1. 13 and 5, their record in the Suburban East. Their losses came to Creighton Durham Hall twice, Stillwater once, Irondale, and then East Ridge. As the puck goes back into the Stillwater end in the last minute here of this first period of play. Puck cannot be cleared back out. It goes off the glass high. As Leighton Road ties up trying to free that puck and give the Bears another chance. Sam Verkirke uses the end boards. Drive from Aulis right into the five hole area. Nice stop that time by Bees. Turnover, Leighton Road trying to center in front for Sam. New power, no good. New power down and low for Road. Road trying to lift it over the shoulder of Bees. Glove side but lifted it instead to the rafters and another face off in the Stillwater end. Just another good job by Wiper Lake, just putting more pressure on, just keep pouring it on onto Stillwater right now. They're doing a great job of holding their zone, using their de defense to get some shots off, and they're doing a great job of getting in front of uh, Bees and uh, creating a little bit of chaos. Bees does seem to give up a lot of good, juicy rebounds, so if Wiper Lake can capitalize on those, the score's gonna keep getting run up. Face off one by Stillwater. They'll flip it off the glass, off the glove of Johnson, back to neutralize. Ooh, Nick, well, Nicky O'Brien chose not to keep his feet moving there. That's a dangerous play. Centering pass from a sharp angle is no good. It goes all the way back to the blue line now, and a chance for Evan Moore, who sends it in further now. Pony's trying to work back here, and a chance right from the slot. They score. Ronald Donar gets in the scoreboard for Stillwater with 12 and a half seconds left. It's 3-1. to one. That time, White Bear Lake was starting to scramble around a little bit in their zone. They weren't doing a great job of being in position. Uh, there's a couple guys out of position, and you know, it is what it is. Once again, uh, now that this could be the start of a comeback for Stillwater, White Bear Lake has to make sure this doesn't let them get them too, too down, uh, but keep putting sustained pressure on. Stillwater, they can use this to continue to build momentum. At this point, it's a three to one game with uh, still two periods left to play after this, 12 seconds. Face off on by White Bear Lake. Not much time to do anything with it here. Onto the near side, looking for Verkirke. This will be an icing. We'll have a face off in the White Bear Lake end. As a goal announced here. It's Joe Manning who got the goal. Looked like three. It'll be Manning's goal. And for Joe Manning on the year, only two goals in the regular season. So it'll be a face off here to the right with 5.6 remaining in the opening period. Face off to the right of Steffens. 11 shots for White Bear Lake, four shots for Stillwater. Should be five now, there it is. Five in the opening frame. 
as New Power Wise will take it to the corner to eat away the remaining five seconds here. A little bit of extra pushing and shoving, but the horn sounds. And fast start for White Bear Lake, but the Ponies get one in the last minute. Three to one, the score here after a period of play. You know, White Bear Lake uh, definitely jumped out to an early lead, but this is something that they just need to go back to the locker room, uh, play smart defensive hockey, and also keep putting the pressure on the offensive zone. Stillwater on the other side needs to know that, hey, we're only down two goals now. we still got two periods to play. Let's uh, put some pressure on. We kind of got our nerves out, and let's uh, keep going. Well, after a period of play, 3-1 to one the score. Shots on goal in that first period, 11-5. to five. We'll be back to recap the first period, show you some highlights. This is your home for White Bear Lake boys hockey. Every empty seat at a concert, game, or special event is a missed opportunity to say thank you to America's heroes. Donate your extra tickets to VetTix. Give something to those who gave. Go to VetTix.org. First intermission here at Aldrich Arena, White Bear Lake 3, Stillwater 1, alongside Allison Volk to Mounts West. It shuts on goal in that first period. It was 11-5 favoring White Bear Lake, and really, Alley for the Bears, a, a team that this season didn't necessarily have fast starts. They really had one here tonight. Yeah, they really put the pressure on them. As soon as they scored that first goal, it's like they kept wanted to just keep pouring on and pouring on to um, keep this game going in the right direction, and they had a great start. Of course, in the last 12 seconds, they did give up that one goal, but uh, we'll see if they can come back out and continue their strong start. Three goal scores in that first period for White Bear Lake. One on the power play. Sam Newpower started the scoring. And again, you see here, God, just a beautiful chance. He just ripped it off the top corner. And Newpower excited as all get out as he gets his first goal. Then the second one on the power play. Grant Hofeld with a nice shot from the top of the circle. Gave the Bears a two to nothing advantage. And again, New, uh, Hofeld, one of the better shooters on this White Bear Lake team. Then almost three minutes later, chance for Tristan Johnson, who fanned on the initial shot, but Billy Rose quick on the spot. Logan B's well out of position, and that gave White Bear Lake the three to nothing advantage at that time. As that gave the Bears a good chance here and a great start in this contest. However, inside the last minute with 13 seconds left to go, a chance and a good goal for Joe Manning as he beat Steffens through the five hole, giving the Ponies their first goal of the evening. And that's how we got to our score here, three to one after the first period of play. We have a lot more hockey to go, a lot more nerves to get through, and a lot of uh, conversations to have here in the second period. Coming back, come and join us. This is your home for Bears hockey.
the score after the first period of play, getting ready to start the second as the Bears return to the ice. You know, so far here in the Minnesota State High School League playoffs in the section tournament, there's been a lot of big upsets across each of the sections here where a lot of number one teams and teams that have been favored in matchups have not advanced on in certain rounds. Again, the big ones that you think of off the top of your head as we take a look. The top four still remains, but Rosemont, Pryor Lake, Benil St. Margaret is out now on a overtime penalty shot to Blake earlier today. That must have been a pretty egregious uh, penalty there to them, weren't the penalty shot in OT in a section game. Hill Murray still in it, but Creighton Durham Hall, Edina, Blaine and Maple Grove will play here tomorrow night in the 5AA final. Wyzetta out, Grand Rapids out, Lakeville South is in it. He'll, they'll play Hastings in the 1AA final tomorrow. Minnetonka out, Lakeville North out, St. Thomas Academy still in. And one of these two teams at 18 and 20 respectively will be out following the end of this one today. We got about a minute before the start of the second period. Allison, what did the Ponies need to do to get back into this hockey game where they were really dominated throughout most of the first. They just need to feed off that momentum that they had in the last 30 seconds of the first period. Um, they're only talent down two goals. Uh, if they have the mindset that, yes, this is something that we can overcome and we can still beat this this Waper Lake team, then it, they, they have a very good chance. Uh, the biggest mindset that our coach, I remember always telling us, is that the score is 0-0. Always play the score is 0-0. That way you never get too high and you never get too low. Um, so that's something that still is going to need to do. Meanwhile, on the other side of the ice for White Bear Lake, 10-0 in the regular season when leading after a period. What do they need to do to keep the lead and add some insurance? They're going to need to make sure they don't take their foot off the gas and just get complacent in the fact that they have a 3-1 lead. As soon as they do that, Stillwater is going to come back and make this a 3-2 game or a 3-3 game. Um, so White Bear Lake is going to need to keep putting on pressure and not do some of the Wild uh, almost did uh, last night against the Columbus Blue Jackets. 11-5, shots a goal in the first period, favoring White Bear Lake as the two teams return to center ice. The Bears shooting left to right across your screen. The Ponies shooting right to left in their home whites, and the Bears in the road black and orange. The Ponies win the opening drawn again, an aggressive play turned over now. Sam Burkirky taken down on a check that time by the Ponies' Evan Murr as the puck goes back into the Stillwater defensive end. Here's Manning. Goes off of his stick as it carried back into the open of the ice, and the pad save that time by Tyler Steffens. Four saves on five shots in the opening frame as it goes onto the far side. Sam Verkirky trying to play it. Hops off over his stick. It's tied back up right near the blue line. They get further for Verkirky. Board pass here for Leighton Road trying to skate around the defense. Road going right to the net. Sharp angle shot and a good save that time from Logan Bees. Bees had eight saves on 11 shots in the first period. As the puck goes back here now to the goal line where it can be carried away. Big check there in the corner. As a puck freed now here by Leighton Road. Road working into the slot, hit off the blocker there, and a big loose puck play. As, oh, that went dangerously. That almost went off of our play. It hit off the stanch, then somehow stayed in the field of play for Ison. And that was a weird bounce. Uh, Stanchion gate uh, 2020, maybe. <laughs> um, Wipe your leg clearly so far in this first minute of this uh, second period has decided to continue to put pressure on, um, which is, uh, I, I was expecting Stillwater to come out with a little bit more uh, a little bit more energy and a little bit more zest. We'll see if they can uh, do that here. Face off to the left of Logan Bees, as it'll be Billy Rose opposed by Nick Dario. It's won by the Bears. Nicky O'Brien will send it down. It hit off the stick of Tristan Johnson. Pass the stick of Rose and pass the stick further of Camden Benson for the Ponies. It's picked up here behind the Pony net here by Henry Lawrence. On the four check. Ooh, big check there. As the buck gets freed here to the corner, where it can be taken here now by Stillwater, Nick Dario. Gaining speed out of his own defensive zone through neutral ice as the Ponies regain possession. Still want a very strong second period team, as many teams are. And now a break here in on a short angle and a good job by Joey Fratalone to keep him out of play. Back into the defensive end now for Stillwater can be taken here by, by Robert Dustin. Through neutral ice, big collision at the White Bear Lake blue line. Into the attacking zone, two on two rush, good defense that time by Ethan Murky on the coverage. It's held in here now by Stillwater's Nick Dario. Try to work it down a little bit, lost the handle to it. First to it there is Nicky O'Brien. O'Brien trying to free the puck. Who keeps his legs moving in order to skate that puck up by us along the end boards. He'll tie up here again. It's Nicky O'Brien. O'Brien will tie up. So get further along now. Ooh, good pass for by Ethan Murky up ahead. Two on two rush through center. Rose, oh, just barely offsides as the pass looking for Grant Hofeld. 
And they'll have a neutral zone faceoff coming 14-49 remaining in the second period. Once again, White Bear Lake's doing a great job of keeping Stillwater to the outside in their uh, in their own zone and uh, keeping them down to low danger shots. That was a great, great uh, defensive play by Joey Fratellona that in that which uh, Stillwater could have easily had like a breakaway. Okay, Cody Tech shot from the blue line in and out of the glove of Bees. As a puck can be carried back in. Goes back through the center. Can be gotten to again here by Tyler Shower, who gains possession, dumping it back in. First to it, though, Ethan Merkey for White Bear Lake. Going DDD behind the net for Zach Kuyaba, trying to center out in front of the ponies, able to flip it off the glass down over the stick of Montgomery. Kate Cody Tech lost an edge. And a break now for Stillwater's Ryan Rusky. Good save by Tyler Steffens. Puck taken away now for the Bears. A two on one rush through center. Tyler Shower in. Shower tried to pass it for Ethan Murky, but a good defensive play on the back check by Joe Manning to take away the pass. Kate Cody Tech sends the puck in as the Bears will change. Their offensive units. Noah Tussie through center. The University of Minnesota commit. The junior for the Stillwater Ponies. Cuts back at the half wall. Puck going down low on the goal line. It can be held in further here by Ty Tichito. Down the goal line. White Bear Lake going to get it on the far side. Shower will flip it past the defense of Murr. On the rush now here for Sam. New power plays on side. New power puts it into the skates of the ponies. Little poke puck goes free there now by Leighton Road. Road holds it on the near, near circle. Trying to go low for New Power. Give and go chance for uh, Leighton Road. It's unsuccessful there as a puck taken away here again on the four check. Worked so well in the first period for White Bear Lake. It's working again here. On the end boards. They try to carry it back now. Sam Burkirke. Backhand flip into the Stillwater offensive end. And on the four check, Sam no power with a check that time of Joe Manning, the Sto uh, Stillwater Pony goal scorer. Has a puck tied up here in the corner off the half wall. Leighton Road trying to work in on the pressure. He'll cut it back, looking for the point in Verkirke. It's no good, but O'Brien able to flip it back in off the end boards where it can be taken again here by Stillwater's Evan Murr. Murr pass further, goes off the stick that time of Alas. Defensively now is Joe Manning. Pass further up ahead, great steal by Billy Rose as the puck goes back through the center and the Ponies trying to carry it in. And a chance now as the Ponies got a fresh change off as Michael Sweetland try to center, they score again. Beautiful pass from Michael Sweetland to Ronald Donar, it's three to two. Wow, that was a great redirect into the net there for Stillwater. Uh, Wiper Lake of course getting some more sustained pressure again, but uh, Stillwater is able to capitalize on their chance going the other way. That'll be the goal. The Ronald Donar who gets on the board for Stillwater. That's his fourth goal of the season. He had three in the regular season as he played in 25 contests. Three goals, 14 assists. Sweetland with a beautiful pass. Not a whole lot that Steffens could do about it. So the goal coming with 12, 44 and counting remaining. Stillwater leads in shots on goal in the second period by three to one. White Bear Lake leads 12 to eight overall. And the Ponies right back looking to draw even. Into the new in the attacking zone for Stillwater. They tie up here along the end boards. Luke Alla is able to free the puck and can be gotten further that time, but the ponies are able to hold the puck in. They was looking for a redirect in front, centering pass as the whistle blows. And it appeared that the puck had hit the netting behind the goal. The whistle blows, it'll have a face off here in the White Bear Lake defensive end. It was kind of a strange little uh, deflection. I'm not really sure what happened. It looked like it was hit the glass, but it also like it hit the net at the same time. Face off to the left of Tyler Steffens, the senior who played as a backup to Evan Foss a season ago. All the way back to the neutral zone where Stillwater will have to go back to reset. Camden Benson, puck goes into the opposite corner on the four check. Comes White Bear Lake, trying to get the puck back through to center. And a good job defensively by Jill Stengel to hold the zone. Further up ahead now into the skates of Billy Rose. Grant Hofeld was able to stay on side. Chance for Fratellone as he tried the far blocker side. So tap along the end boards can be gotten low further as it can be taken by Stengel. They try to get it further and out of the zone. They collide. Stengel picks it up again behind his own net for Stillwater. Goes back off the boards. Camden Benson pass further up ahead over the stick of O'Brien. This will be icing of a face off in the Stillwater zone. 11.40 remaining. 3 to 2 White Bear Lake. Shots on goal. 12 to 9 favoring White Bear Lake, but 4 to 1 in the second period for Stillwater. Yeah, it doesn't seem like White Bear Lake has taken their foot off the gas. They've had some good sustained uh, offensive zone pressure, but of course, Stillwater's been coming back the other way. They've been, they capitalized on their one really great chance and gotten shots to the net. Face off here to the right of Logan Bees. Who, after giving up three unanswered goals for White Bear Lake, has held the 
Fort in check for Stillwater. Checked on the boards, goes off the stick of Kuyava right at the offensive zone blue line for White Bear Lake. Ooh, a good check there as the puck goes back down. Steffens will have to play it behind his own net. Evading the four check as the puck held in by Tussie on the far wing. Sent in further now and a chance for Roski. It's picked up here by O'Brien. O'Brien, as there's some conversation and some canoodling, for lack of a better word, back behind the goal line. And the Ponies will reset in their own defensive end. 11-09 and counting remaining in the second period. Noah Tussie off the skates of Merkey. It can be taken here back the other way. Now by the Ponies as they'll skate through center ice into the attacking zone. A couple of shots there as it's blocked by O'Brien in front. Snicky O'Brien tying up in the corner, trying to get back to pressure. Tussie at the blue line. Tussie trying to keep the puck in here as Verkirke applying the pressure. Verkirke frees it, sends it down the length of the ice. The arm is up. It will be icing. Now have another faceoff of coming in the White Bear Lake end. Stillwater's starting to uh, put a little bit more pressure on White Bear Lake. Now they're starting to get a little bit more chances, a little bit more uh, offensive uh, sustained zone pressure, and uh, we'll see what happens from here. You see there the regular season matchup between these two, January the 9th, 2020. It was two goals in the last minute of the third period that gave White Bear Lake the tie in that one before Grant Hofeld won it in overtime with just a beautiful shot. Then on February 4th, you saw the 7-4 final. Good stick here as we return back to play. New power pass further up ahead looking for Verkirke. Tries to skate around center. As will tap into the corner. Too far for Road. Can be taken again here by Stillwater as he'll carry back through center. Great job by Leighton Road to take that puck away. Puck goes off the glass. It's held in that time by Alas in the skates, but no, they will say it is offside of a neutral zone faceoff. They're saying it's hand pass. So the hand pass call will force the face off in the defensive end for White Bear Lake. Again, the winner of this one advances to play the Hill Murray Pioneers on Friday the 28th. That game will be at 7. And no matter the teams that are involved, it will be a sellout here at Aldrich Arena. It's one of the most fun sections in the state of Minnesota. Draws to a conclusion here on Friday night. Verkirke flips it off the boards, back through to center. Leighton Road has a fall on his skates. He picks it up. Mini two-on-one here in front, looking for new power. Off the post, not quite good enough for the Bears. Road had the puck here as the Ponies are able to flip it back down the length of the ice. And this will be an icing call coming. And a miniature two-on-one for White Bear Lake. Hits the post off the stick of Sam Newpower on a two-on-one that they executed perfectly earlier in the game. And Rowe did a great job of hanging on to that puck and then just waiting for an opening to pass it to Sam Newpower. Newpower then was able to get a nice shot off that just missed the mark, but they keep continuing to get chances like that. This, they will score more goals. Face off to the left of Bees. Little tie up here, chance for Tristan Johnson who tried the glove side shoulder, but missed wide to the right. It's held in here by Billy Rose. Hofeld back to the blue line, chance now. For Montgomery working back in. Hofeld a shot into the glove of Bees, who smothers that one up. And another defensive zone draw. 14 to 9 now, actually 15 to 9 now. Shots on goal favoring White Bear Lake, even at four on four in this period. Only one penalty so far it was assessed to Stillwater at 10 29 of the first. Mike Sweetland, an interference minor. And again, you see that chance for Sam Newpower. Looked like it went off the glove and then the post. And that might be a chance that the Bears will need to have back at some point in the game. Buck goes back into the White Bear Lake defensive zone. Tied up here as Cody Tech flips it further along. Bears trying to take it away. Montgomery held up briefly. Rose for Johnson now. Johnson off the stick. Rose will carry it in. The Bears are onside. Oh, a nice extension that time. Grant Hofeld the top. He scores! Great individual effort from Billy Rose and Grant Hofeld with two to nine quarter. Well, two Bears. That was just some, just a great second effort there. And then spinning around and shooting that puck. I don't know if Bees just wasn't expecting it or what, but that was, that was awesome. Grant Hofeld with his second of the game. The right winger for White Bear Lake, giving the Bears a 4-2 lead. There is now a young man crowd surfing in the White Bear Lake section. I imagine Brian Pelliquin, the activities director, will have something to say about that in just a moment. But 4-2, the Bears lead as the Ponies look to respond again. Pass the stick of Verkirke to be taken here now by Manning, who flips it off the boards, back into the White Bear Lake defensive zone briefly. Before it's put back up through center, now Leighton Road from a sharp angle, shot glove save. That time from the far circle for 
Logan Bees will have another faceoff coming in the Stillwater end. Uh, more sustained pressure there from the Bears. Are you are you doing okay? Keep talking. <laughs> uh, the Bears did. A, I mean, that was that was just great. Just great patience there um, and passing. I mean. Great second effort on everything right there, too. The Bears didn't just let up just because it might have not bounced exactly the way they wanted it to. Face off one by Stillwater as they'll carry three on three through center into the attacking zone off the far wing. Can be carried in here now as the Bears are able to free possession. Tyler Shower gets it on the far side. Ethan Murky. Murky flipped up ahead for Kuyaba. Hits him right at center. He gains the red line. He'll dump it in. Logan B is to stop it behind his own net for Stillwater. The goaltender has made 12 saves on 16 shots so far for White Bear Lake, or for Stillwater rather. Intercepted passes. Allis simply pushes that puck back into the Stillwater defensive end. It can be gotten to again here now by Murr. Murr trying to gain some speed. Lost the handle on it. He'll have to start back again. Going back onto the far side now for Grant Miller. Pass further up ahead, looking for Tussie. Goes into the White Bear Lake end as icing is waved off. Luke Allis picks it up on his own goal line. Allis skating through center, pass to the far wing, looking for Shower. He'll send it back in. And now Stillwater able to set back up again in their offensive zone. Pass goes further off the stick of Miller, back through center ice. Can be chipped further along now, and a chance for Leighton Road again. Road without his chance on the scoreboard. Sam New Power trying to go slow. He's taken down and run into. Oh, and that time perhaps the slow decision, maybe not the right one. Puck held in on the far wing. Great job by Luke Gallas. The Bears seniors really stepping up tonight. New power flips it back to the blue line. O'Brien hits a shot through. Good stick the by O'Brien to keep it. Shot through traffic right into the protective equipment in the chest of Logan Bees and another faceoff of coming in the Stillwater end. And New Power just seemed to lose the handle a little bit on that puck. It kind of just got away from him. And then the by that point that he did gain, regain control, the defenseman was right on him again. Uh, could have been the right decision if he had uh, hung on to that puck a little bit better, but just slid off the heel of the stick right there. Face off to the left of Logan Bees. 7.27 remaining in the second period. 4-2 White Bear Lake leading. Again, the two previous contests, 4-3 victory and a chance now. Offsides is called. No, a hand pass called, rather, and the faceoff will come in the Stillwater end. Again, a one-goal contest on January the 9th between these two. And the last meeting on February the 4th, 7-4, Stillwater won. The last couple of matchups between White Bear Lake and Stillwater, if we look back at their head-to-head -head history, White Bear Lake has won six of the past ten against Stillwater. However, it has been... Two straight playoff victories for the Stillwater Ponies as a shot that time from Burkirky is smothered by Bees. Face off to the left of Bees. Again, the Hill Murray Pioneers, lots of their fans, and in fact, the teams themselves have stayed here to watch this one. Here's a chance now for Road, hits off of the stick. That time of Thomas Lindeberg into the netting. Another neutralized face off upcoming. White Bear Lake continue to put on the pressure here on Stillwater. It seems like that goal just kind of re-energized them a little bit. The only playoff meeting in those last 10, that February 23rd matchup on the um, 2016, White Stillwater 4, White Bear Lake 0. It was a down year for the Bears that year as they played to a 500 record as the 5 seed in the section that year. A little bit of a extra check there with the whistle will get called. That was a profanity being shouted by a student. All right. So I'll have the face off coming at neutral ice. It's a little bit choppy here. Uh, last couple, last minute or two, a lot of lost stoppages of place so and not too much going on. 7 one remaining, second period. Face off coming at center ice. Johnson opposing Tussie. And again, you have action on both of the wings. Face off one by White Bear Lake. We'll go D to D this time. Nikki O'Brien from Frat alone. O'Brien will gain the red line. He'll dump it in. His first to it again, White Bear Lake. Grant Hofeld centering pass in front. Was taken away that time on the defensive effort by Evan Murr. Lost in the skates. It was Grant Hofeld. Checked around there. Evan Murr picks it up again in the corner. Again, aggressive on the pressure that time. As it comes here under the near side and a chance for Ryan Roski. Roski in the attacking zone. He'll cut it back. It's held in here by Stillwater. Taken away this time by Fratellone, and now with speed, Ethan Murky. 
into the attacking zone. Lost the handle on it, but Billy Rose picks it up. Rose from a sharp angle in and out of the protective equipment as a loose puck is picked up now back the other way and a two-on-two -two rush here for Stillwater. Through neutralized Nick Dario from the far wing. Dario will cut it back, waiting for assistance. Dario, pass wide open to the blue line. Ooh, off the skate that time of Zach Kuyaba. And the puck right near the White Bear Lake goal. Fratalone flips it off the half wall, can be gotten further along now, and a chance as it's checked. And another check there on the far boards as they'll tie up. Puck loose here at the half wall. Can be carried back through center, or through the defensive end. So tie up again, Billy Rose doing a good job. Oh, don't do that, don't do that, Billy Rose. And that is a penalty that the Bears are gonna regret having as he just got a little bit over emotional as these rivalry games tend to be and he'll be headed to the box for roughing for two minutes. Yeah, that's just definitely an undisciplined penalty to take. Uh, you can't really uh, cross-check the guy in the head as he seemed to be doing here. Um, it's got to be something you got to be a little bit more disciplined about. And uh, moving forward, hopefully White Bear Lake can kill this penalty off and then just forget about it and move on. Stillwater on the power play this season. They had 86 chances. They scored 25.6% of the time. On the penalty kill for White Bear Lake, 97 penalty kills. They killed 84 and a half of them. Yeah, one of the problems that White Bear Lake had in the second half of the season was that they simply spent too much time in the penalty box. Yeah, penalties did, did definitely seem to be killer to them. Um, you know, later this season, uh, as we we saw during when they beat, played uh, Creighton Durham Hall, that they uh, took a five on three, and that really seemed to be the turning point of the game for them. So. The penalty, nope, the, okay, there was just an issue there. The penalty to Billy Rose going back up. Face off to the left of Steffens. Two minute power play. First chance on the power play for Stillwater tonight. He's tied up on the end boards. So still continue to fight for it with skate and stick. Trying to, for Stillwater, free it for White Bear Lake. Keep it pinned up there on the end boards. Still doing a great job of that. It's 15 seconds gone already on the power play and sent down the length of the ice by Sam Newpower and a good start to the power play. Or the penalty kill, rather, for White Bear Lake. As Bees flips it back up, Tussie will send it back for Evan Murr, who will restart and quarterback this power play for Stillwater. Tussie goes with a little dump pass back to Murr as he'll skate through. Looking for Tussie, great intercept that time by Brady O'Brien. Leighton Road dumps to the opposite corner, and some of the penalty killing lines will change. Alice out there, along with Montgomery, Burkirke, and Hofeld. Through neutral ice into the attacking end. Tussie lost the handle on it, sent back down by Alles. A minute and eight seconds remaining on the power play for Stillwater. 4.45 remaining in the second period. 4 to 2, White Bear Lake leads. The winner of this one gets Hill Murray on Friday night right here at Aldrich Arena in what will be a sold out capacity crowd. Nice poke there on the forecheck by Grant Hofeld, working on a shorthanded bid, trying to get around the defense, but Murr takes him away. Three on two rush through center. On the power play into the attacking zone. Sweetland a shot. Good save that time with the legs by Tyler Steffens as Grant Hofeld again picks it up shorthanded. Hofeld dumps it to the opposite corner as Coach Sager motions for a line change. It can be picked up again here out of the own defensive zone by Joe Manning. He scored first for Stillwater as a pass back, back up here on the near side for Ryan Roski. Through neutralize. Can be flipped further now. Roski centering pass in front. Steffens with a stick to force it away. Taken away here now. As the ponies hold the zone, here's Roski. Big drive for Manning right into the protective equipment of Steffens. He'll hold on for a face-off. And a little bit of extra, too. I think that was the first shot on goal the, po the ponies had um, during this power play. Uh, White Bullock's done a really great job of, uh, of uh, throwing the puck down the ice. And it looks like we got a penalty here against the ponies. Looks like they're going to have offsetting minors to Fratalone and Sweetland. Both each for, should be both each for roughing. A little bit of extracurriculars going on after the end of that play. Uh, you can tell that uh, emotions are starting to come into play into this game. Coach Sager wants an explanation too. This is one of the rivalries that when we're in the penalty box for these two, there's always side conversations happening. One of my favorite chirps that I heard from a high school player came between White Bear Lake and Stillwater a couple of years ago. Fortunately, can't say it under the air to the uh, adult nature of that chirp, but just know it was funny. The other interesting thing is, too, is that the bench is down here below us. There's nothing separating these two teams. There's no glass that goes all the way up to the top of the glass that you would see around the ice. So they can definitely shout over to it to one another. Successful penalty kill for White Bear Lake as they're back to full strength as Billy Rose hops out of the box. Puck can be kept in alive here. As skating back with it out the other way now. And a chance here for Ronald Donar. He has the latest Stillwater goal. 
And the puck flipped back through center. Nice little spin move there for Roski into the attacking zone. He'll send the puck around. Stephens to stop it. Gotten further now and a chance here for Brady O'Brien to look to start the breakout. Long stretch pass up ahead looking for New Power. New Power has it lifted off of his stick by Murr. As will take it all the way down to the corner and a nice job by New Power. Road sent it for New Power working through traffic shot into the equipment looking blocker side of Logan Bees. And a face off of coming in the Stillwater end. 3.02 left, 4-2 White Bear Lake leads. Shots on goal in the hockey game, 18-11 White Bear Lake, 7-6 Bears into this second period and for a strong a start as Stillwater had or was 5-1 shots on goal for the Ponies in this second period. White Bear Lake has responded well. Yeah, they really have. They didn't let the fact that uh, the that uh, the Ponies came within one to kind of slow them down. They decided to bear down and keep their foot on the gas. Ooh, good check that time by Tristan Johnson lowering the shoulder. Grant Hofeld. Skating around the defense, working to the net, in on Bees. The Bear fans want a penalty here. They won't get one. But a great check by Tristan Johnson in the open eyes gave Hofeld that chance. He did a great job of just driving towards the net. Uh, good things happen. You put the puck on that when you drive towards the net. The net. And if White Bear keeps doing that, good things will happen. More profanities being <laughs> slung from the student section in a traditional chant. Face off to the right of Bees. As Johnson opposed that time by Stengel. It's won by Stengel for the Ponies. He carries it here to the half wall where it can be sent further around now. Back to reset Joe Manning. Manning passed further up ahead. Was looking that time for Tachito as it sent all the way back in off the stick of Montgomery. Back to get it here now. Thomas Lindeberg for Stillwater. Lost the handle on it. Comes here to the near side where Nick Dario has the chance to play it further. Through neutral. Joe Stengel passed further up ahead for Tachito along the wing. Tachito, big check again by Joe Montgomery. Kate Kodytek flips it around now, all the way off to the end boards, back through neutral ice, and a good forecheck this time by Rode, but rubbed out that time by Murr. Pass intercepted there by Montgomery, who sends it back in down into the White Bear Lake, zone, uh, White Bear Lake attacking zone. Back to get it now, Manning. Manning on the pressure. New power able to free it for Kirky held up. We'll be taken this time again by Stengel, who flips it off the boards. Oh, and a good leaping play that time by Luke Alas. Alas sends it back in where the Ponies will have to go back to reset. Avoiding a couple of stick checks can be gotten here further now. Held back in. O'Brien will send it further. As the Ponies will have to go back and get to it. Thomas Lindeberg here under the near side. Pass further up ahead looking for the stick at Tachito. Goes off. Alas will send it in again. Manning resets. Manning working in. It can be restarted here now by Roski. Pass further to the far side. Stretch pass now for Stengel into the attacking zone. Stengel trying to work around the defense. No, says a very talented Luke Alas. Leighton Road waiting for the lines to change. Cuts it back. Looking at the half wall. He'll ring it around the end boards. Can be gotten to first here by Grant Hofeld for White Bear Lake. Rose. Pass for O'Brien. Shot. Ooh, redirected in front that time by Leighton Road. A good chance for White Bear Lake. Held in by Alas. Goes off the stick that time of Noah Tussie, who will carry it back through center inside the last minute to go here in the second period of play. Tied up behind the end boards. Can be gotten further now on a chance here for Tristan Johnson as he'll skate out of his own defensive zone. Johnson, pass through center off the stick, trying to get to it was Hofeld. He was able to free it as Bees applied the flying poke check. Tristan Johnson onto the far side looking for Tussie. Unable to clear the zone, it can be flipped back out through the center. Goes off the padding that time of Rose and carrying it back in before dumping will be Nick Dario. Trying to work around the forecheck of O'Brien, who's taken out of the play. Montgomery sent further along now, centering pass in front. Stick save that time for Steffens. Tussie trying to center the puck here again in the last 15 seconds of the second period. Montgomery will cut it back. Looking to free it again. Billy Rose here in the corner. He'll push it up against the boards. Can be taken away again here by Montgomery, who sends it behind the net. And they'll tap again here right behind the goal line. So they'll go to the opposite corner. And that's how the second period ends. Both teams scored once. And the score after two periods of play, 4-2 to two shots on goal in that second period, 7-6, to 18-11 to 11 overall favoring the Bears. And really, Ali, a back-and-forth period here in the second. Yeah, it was a back and forth period. Um, Stillwater definitely did come out and uh, put a little bit more sustained pressure on White Bear Lake and, of course, scored a goal. Of course, they're still down by two, but they still have a full period left to come back. Both teams need to come out with the mindset of the game 0 0, though. We'll be back to recap the second intermission, talk about some more things. This is your home for White Bear Lake Boys Hockey.
My Shiro doesn't always wear a cape, but she always has time for a hug, a smile, for going the extra mile. My Shiro stretches every dollar, puts in long hours, puts others first. But now it's your time, Mom. When you're ready to retire, we want you to be able to enjoy it. It's time to start saving now. A free three-minute online chat can give you the personalized tips you need to start boosting your retirement savings today. Visit aceyourretirement.org slash Shiro. I am what hunger looks like in America. I am an eight-year-old girl who's not excited for the last day of school. Because this may be the last time I'll have lunch. Till September. I am a single father of two who works three part-time jobs, and well, that's still not enough to put food on the table. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. Second intermission here from historic Aldrich Arena. After two periods of play, the three seed White Bear Lake, 18th overall in Class 2A, leads the Stillwater Ponies, 20th overall in Class AA, uh, by a, sc a score of 4 to 2. Alongside uh, Allison Vogt, I'm Alex Westad. And Allison, the first period, White Bear Lake dominant. Second period, good series of flow back and forth between the two teams, and a lot to go here in the third. Yeah, this is going to be a very intense. Very, I think, fast uh, third period here. I think it's going to be a really great third period. Uh, and we'll see what happens. I'm curious to see if uh, how White Bear Lake comes out. They come out with the same mentality of keep putting pressure on. And if uh, Stillwater can come out uh, with the same energy. What? We're going to take a look at the goals here again. This is the goal for Stillwater that was scored by Ronald Donar. Again, just a great pass here from Michael Sweetland and wide open right in front who just beat Leighton Road. God, what a pass. That was just a great redirect too. Wow, that takes a lot. Good, great hand-eye coordination. Just a beautiful goal. Meanwhile, Wiper Lake with a fancy goal of their own. That extra 100% effort play creates his chance for Grant Hofeld. Yeah, this is just a bunch of second effort and just not giving up on the play. The puck was not bouncing maybe exactly the way they wanted it to, but they just kept going after it and kept moving their feet. Move your feet, the call from the redhead Allison Vogt. Seven to six shots on goal, favoring White Bear Lake in that second period. 18 to 11 overall White Bear Lake. The Zamboni has just resurfaced from the ice, and we are awaiting the res resumation of this uh, hockey game. 17 minutes left in the third period of play. The winner of this one faces off against the Hill Murray Pioneers. Upcoming on Friday night, the two teams both played Hill Murray for White Bear Lake. It was a dramatic contest, lots of back and forth. And we look at the schedule for White Bear Lake as they played last year. We were here for it. It was on Tuesday. That's the Stillwater schedule, I'm sorry. And if we go back and we take a look through it again, the um, Hill Murray Pioneers lost that one by a final 3-2. It was Billy Rose in overtime that gave the Bears the win that day. Again, you look there at the key wins. At the time, White Bear Lake was number six in 2A. Hill Murray was number eight. Or no, those are the current rankings, excuse me. January the 9th, Thousand was there for it, too, as it was the White Bear Lake Bears defeating the Stillwater Ponies 4-3 in overtime. And then here at Aldrich Arena, the annual Aldrich Arena game for White Bear Lake, a 2-1 overtime victory between the Blaine Bengals and the White Bear Lake Bears as Blaine was the number one seed out of Section 5 AA, and they play Maple Grove here at Aldrich tomorrow in the Section 5 AA final. Stillwater, on the other hand, they had a lot of quality wins, too. As we look there at their schedule, again, you see Cloquiasco Carlton. They were around in the semifinal round out of Section 7 AA. 6A, Matamirai Zephyr's number one seed out of 4A. They advanced to the final tonight. They also had that win over White Bear Lake on the fourth, and then a 6-1 to one thrashing of the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders back on February the 6th. But all those stats mean nothing as we sit here after two periods of play, 4-2. to two. Updating you briefly as it stands on many of the scores around the State of Hockey, Matamidi victorious over the Tartan Titans, 2 to nothing in the Section 4A semifinal round. Hill Murray, 6-2 over Moundsview in the early contest as they'll host, or they'll be the number one seed in the home team on Friday night. Blake, overtime winners over Benilde St. Margaret's on an overtime penalty shot. 
to win that section for Blake as the Bears are headed to the state for the first time in a number of years without a Dino or Wyzetta in their way. The Hermantown Hawks continue their domination of Section 7. A as they won 6 to nothing over Duluth Denfield in that section final. I believe that's a section final. As the Bears return to the ice here. Morehead and the Spuds over the Rozo Rams 3-2 at the Sanford Center up there in the, I think that's Morehead. That should be Morehead. Mankato East over Mankato West, 3-1. As East will return to the state tournament. Hutchinson over Litchfield, Asshole, Kokato, and the Dragons 7 to 1 at the Lund Center down in Owatonna. St. Paul Academy, South St. Paul tied at one at Roseville on the other side of the 4A final. The winner gets Mata Midai on Friday night as well. As sec both section fours are the last ones to play. Chaska Needham Prairie scoreless from Mariucci and right here in Altarina, 4 to 2. They lead. Meanwhile, the two teams have returned to the ICC. Grant Hofel with a pair of goals tonight for the senior. 25 games played, 13 goals in the regular season. He's committed to the University of Georgia to play golf for the Bulldogs down there. Still Bulldogs. Not those Bulldogs, little lady. Not those Bulldogs. As we await the uh, start here of the third period of play, Gabe Bartlett on his way back to the camera stand. Thank you, Gabe. I know, call, we will make it through. The tough part of the day is over. <laughs> we have made it through. Whatever else happens is just icing on the cake. Two teams will switch ends here again. You've seen their Logan B is clearing the crease. He had a rough start to the contest, but improved in the second period. He has made uh, 14 saves on 18 shots for the Stillwater senior. Meanwhile, on the other end of the ice, it has been nine saves on 11 shots for senior Tyler Steffens. And everything is lovely once again. Face off at center ice. It's a five-man crew in the penalty box tonight as well. That will be road opposed by Tussie. And the face off one here by a White Bear Lake. Third period of action underway. Road trying to chip it further back into the offensive zone. Road will cut back, trying to move it further along as Leighton Road carries through into the attacking zone. Great effort this time. Sam Newpower flipped further for Road off the backhand. And Road will cut it back. Newpower without a glove. He goes back to get it as the puck comes here onto the near side where Stillwater can carry along. Pass further up ahead into the air. Can be carried further along. Now got back here. Chance for Brady O'Brien who flips it back out through the center down the length of the ice. And icing is called. 16-29 remaining in this third period. Yeah, we'll see how these two teams come out. Um, of course, we're already 31 seconds into the first period, but right now there's not too much happening. Uh, so that was an icing. Uh, there's mostly neutral zone play, but uh, so Water's definitely going to make a push here, and we'll see if White Bear Lake can hang on. Face off to the left of Tyler Steffens. White Bear Lake, when leading after the second period of play 11-2 and 1 in the regular season, count the 1 and 0 as well with the quarterfinal victory over the Woodbury Royals last Saturday. An overtime contest, should we get there? White Bear Lake perfect 3-0 in overtime this season. Puck held in here. Nice stick poke check that time by Verkirky as it's flipped back out through the center. And the Ponies will have to restart. Strong start to the period here for Stillwater. Stefan stop it, stops it behind his own net. Brady O'Brien flipped further onto the far side for Sam Newpower. Goes back into the defensive zone to get it for Robert Dustin for the Stillwater Ponies. A lot of age on the Stillwater Pony team as they carry back in now. And a chance here for Brady O'Brien. Centering pass for Rose. Goes off the stick in time as Bees had butterflied. Held in by Johnson. Rose flips it further this time. Centering pass looking again for Rose through his skates. Goes all the way back to the blue line now and a chance for Nicky O'Brien as he pinched. The two-goal lead, as Allison said earlier, the most dangerous lead in hockey as they'll tie up here again. Taking off the boards. A chance here. Shot missed wide. Going all the way here to the near side. Michael Sweetland back out through the center, down into the neutral zone. This will be icing? Yeah. Yeah, it's icing. Okay. That was I, icing. I thought he could have made a play on it. Maybe. But, uh, yeah, two-goal leads definitely the most dangerous lead in hockey. Um, the te that team that's ahead tends to feel that they are safe and they kind of let their foot off the gas and kind of, you know, get a little bit too complacent, whereas the team that's down tends to push hard, and then once they get that first goal, it gives them a lot of energy. Face off one by White Bear Lake. O'Brien holds in. He's gone two back by Murr behind his own goal. Ethan Murr will cut it back. Evades a check by Murky. Zach Kuyaba takes a full body check that time. It's dumped to the opposite corner, going back to the far side. Ethan Murky sent down and low. Be held in by Kuyava. Kuyava cutting it back. It's held in. 
Be taken further here and a chance now for Stillwater for Grant Miller as again. The four check from White Bear Lake has been effective since the opening puck drop, but the, this time it's flipped back out through the center where Keegan O'Brien can carry it in now. First time we've called his name tonight for Stillwater. Nick O'Brien, very Irish connection with St. Patrick's Day right around the corner. As the puck hits into the White Bear Lake bench, we'll have a neutral zone face off coming. 14-33 and counting. Pretty good crowd here tonight at Aldrich Arena. It'll be full, 34,000 the capacity on this old historic barn. Minnesota Wild's team name was announced here back in 1999. The first girls state high school hockey tournament was held here. The first four years actually were held here at Aldrich Arena. So a lot of history in this building, both personal and across the state of hockey. Can you tell folks, can you tell this guy's a history teacher? The Cheetos backhand pass sent on. Tussie here, we're gonna have a stick lift. Oh, and a big drive. We're gonna have a whistle. Looks like a penalty coming up against. Gonna be a hooking call hooking. coming here. Looks against like Kate, White Bear Lake. Kate Kolitek going to the box. Why was that blown dead? Um, I'm wondering if someone touched it that we just missed, maybe. But usually to gain control of the puck before they blow the whistle. So that, so that was interesting. So Kate Kolitek, the offender on the hooking minor, coming at the 239 mark. Second chance on the power play for Stillwater. Again, they operated at a 25% clip in the regular season. They are 0 for 1 so far in this contest. They had two shots on goal on that first power play. Yep. As the puck goes all the way back down into the corner. Good check that time from O'Brien. This is picked up here by New Power, flipping it off the, um, the half wall. Goes back into the defensive zone. Road on the four check. Great job that time to poke it away from Noah Tussie. Road lost the handle that time, and it'll be restarted here by Joe Stengel. Ponies have been deliberate on their breakouts, taking a lot of time before moving the puck out of the zone. To Cheeto, send it further here now for Evan Murr. Further skating here, Noah Tussie. Tussie through neutral ice can be picked up here again by Stengel, who will simply send it back into the attacking zone. And really for the Stillwater Pony time as the laid off sides call was made as that was being chased after that time by Joe Stengel. Really when you look at the regular season stats for the Stillwater Ponies, as you take a gander at them, the leading scorers, Noah Tussie with 23 goals, Joe Stengel with 19, Mike Sweetland and Ryan Roski both with 11 apiece. The leading goal scorers for the Ponies team have really been held off the scoreboard as Donar with only three goals coming in, Manning with only two goals coming in. So it's been the lower level players scoring for Stillwater as White Bear Lake has been stout defensively on those top lines. Yeah, White Bear Lake's done a really good job of shutting them down, keeping them to the outside, and making sure they're not getting those grade-A opportunities. Of course, in these types of games, it's always the it's always like the un unexpected hero sometimes to just come through, and, you know, like, it, you just never know. 53 seconds remaining on the power play chance here for Stillwater. Pass along the far wing. It can be carried in that time. Nice job into the skates of the officials. There was a broken stick as it was Noah's Tuss Noah Tussie's stick who had broken. Goes back into the defensive zone. As Sweetland replay this again, the rubber game in the season series between these two schools as both teams won on their home ice back in January for the Bears and February for the Ponies. As the puck won, centering pass in front, just hopped over the stick that time of the Stillwater's Ronald Donar. Shot from the far circle, hits off the stick in front of Donar, set down the length of the ice. That should just about do it for this power play with all but 15 seconds remaining on the Cade Cody Tech holding or hooking minor. Can be restarted. Back behind their own defensive zone, where it can be Joe Manning now, starting the breakout. Manning pass further up ahead, through neutral ice. Skating through center. Working here on the near wing, shot blocked off the stick that time of Aulis as the Bears return to full strength. Held in here by Stillwater. As again, they'll tap into the corner. Puck can be taken further here by New Power as it goes down to the Stillwater end. This will not be icing as Bees have gone out to play it. Billy Rose looking for a chance for Leighton Road. Has a point open in Aulis, flipped further. They try to hold in. Oh, wow, what a play by Leighton Rhodes. Centering pass in front. Billy Rose unable to finish. Here on the near side, Luke Allis again. Allis wristed shot hit off of the shoulder pad of a pony. It can be sent further around now as it's Billy Rose. Down and low, new power. Going all the way back and a chance for Allis. Allis wristed shot. Ooh, off the stick of new power in front of the net. He was looking for the redirect that time. That was a great redirect by him. Uh, of course, uh, um, Bees was right in the right position and had, was able to make that kick save. In the corner. Rowe going in there. He's held into the corners by Camden Benson. Continuing to fight with that time as the puck is freed off the attempt that time of Rose through neutral. Aldrich 
uncharacteristically quiet right now as the puck goes back to the White Bear Lake end. Alice gaining speed, trying to avoid the four check, flipped off the glass. Again, the higher glass here at Aldrich Arena compared to years past. Coming into play a couple of times tonight. The tie up, going back into the defensive zone. Turnover, Tussie fan on the first shot right through the blue paint as it was tied to Cheeto, who was open in the slot. Centering pass in front, looking again for Tussie in a break. Now for Ethan Murky with speed. Ethan Murky trying to work his way in. Murky taken down. We'll see him at the penalty shot. It might not be as it looked like he was taken down from the side. A little tied up into the corner, delayed chance here. Steffens heads to the bench. Puck still not gained possession as he's here on the near boards. Ethan Murky with the extra man. Murky is shot into the glove pad. The beast, they score! Delayed penalty call, five, two, Bears! Nikki O'Brien first to the celebration line. And for the sophomore, that is his first goal of the playoffs. Once again, that was just more great second effort by White Bear Lake, not giving up on the play, not, you know, making sure they keep control of the puck during this time. Still a conversation between the officials at the semi-circle. The power play goal was scored, or not the power play goal, the extra man goal was scored. Now the linesman comes in to join the conversation. So 5-2 to the lead with 10.30 remaining here in the period. I'm not sure if they're discussing some type of interference or if they're or if uh, Stillwater might have been arguing that they did have possession of the puck down on the half wall there. Um, it, I thought they kind of looked like they did, but um, maybe they didn't. And it's kind of hard to see from the angle that we're at. Um, yeah, I, I'm not really sure. Nikki O'Brien has had one goal in the regular season for the sophomore, his first year playing for either varsity or junior varsity. He's a freshman in my human geography class at White Bear Senior High School last season. Real good student. No goal, they say. I would love to hear an explanation on this. So the goal taken off the scoreboard. I'd be curious to know what, yeah, what the, what the explanation is. Maybe there's something that we weren't seeing. Um, so the com conversation between the officials, the only announcement made by the PA announcer was simply no goal. So we don't know why that was waved off. And the explanation still coming here. Well, he just said it, but I couldn't hear it. <laughs> hmm. So the fifth goal of the game taken off the scoreboard. We're going to have a horn sound, typically signaling that the officials are needed back in the box. There's the horn again. So we're going to have another conversation between the officials. So the goal for Nikki O'Brien taken off the board will be a power play due for White Bear Lake, as it'll be the second. It'll be the second chance in the power play for White Bear Lake. Here with 10.30 remaining in this period. Face off one by White Bear Lake. Alas, they did score on the opening power play as Grant Hofeld got his first goal of the game. He's got two tonight for the Bears. Road working in, give and go play. We'll see if they get it. Chance here, Hofeld shot blocker save that time. Looking for the rebound, puck is loose in front. Still loose and it goes into the fielding of Bees. And where is the hand pass on that? Yeah, you can't cover the puck with your hand and uh, just kind of swipe it back to your goaltender. So I'm curious to see what they're gonna, if they're gonna call or do anything on this, but we, we shall see. Face off to the left of Bees. 10-11 remaining in the third period. A minute 42 remaining on the power play. Here's the face off one by White Bear Lake. Road going back to Ob to Alas Road, working down here for Rose again. Rose, back to the blue line point here for Alas. Back to Rose, who will field it off the end boards. Looking under that far wing again for Leighton Road. Road, here for Alas again. Road from the circle, working his way in. Down a little further for Rose. Road working again, the give and go play attempted. No f attempt there, there's a puck here taken away. Road. Holding the puck in, we're gonna have a whistle. And now what's this? 
As the whistle blows and one of the ponies appear to be grabbing his wrist. And the fans on the White Bear Lake side of things have to be frustrated with how things have been going for them in this period. You know, my understanding of the rule, maybe it's maybe it's at the NHL level, not at the high school level, is that the team that has the injured player has to gain control of the puck before the whistle is blown. A more positive chant coming from the adults of the White Bear Lake student section of Let's Go Bears. Here with a minute and four remaining on the White Bear Lake power play. It's held in the corner. It can be taken further along. Pushed back to the blue line here in a chance for Luke Alas. Leighton Road again. Down and low further for Road. For Rose, rather, excuse me. Billy Rose. Centering pass in front. Leighton Road to it. As the ponies were collapsed off the stick of Alas and back out through to center ice. 41 seconds remaining on the power play in the penalty time. Here's Leighton Road to shot. Ooh, trying the glove side of Logan Bees. Could be held in here by New Power. New Power held in further now. Leighton Road trying to work back in through. What a move! That no! He does not score again! Another. A great move by Leighton Road, but Logan Bees proving his worth. And he says no. Another great, great, great drive towards the net by Road. Um, another great second effort by a White Bear Lake player. Um, Bees did a great job of locking down that side and making sure that Road wasn't going to score off that second chance that he had. NHL caliber save for Logan Bees, who just got that right pad out in order to make that play. Puck goes offside, hit off the leg of the ponies, and again, still offside. Where's the puck now? As it goes back here through to neutral ice, can be taken here by Billy Rose. The defense pairing has switched. This time as Fratellone and Joe Montgomery play with each other. Back into the defensive zone. Down the length of the ice. And Steffens will have to field it. Five seconds remaining. Steffens will play it up ahead looking for Rose. And a good chance now here for Tristan Johnson as the ponies return to full strength. Johnson from the wing. Centering pass in front is no good. And the ponies can start back the other way here with 8.22 remaining in the third period of play. 4-2 to two the score in a controversial third period. As the puck goes back here on the goal line. Burkirke lost the handle here this time. Be taken up further by Fratellone. Fratellone skating through center. Tristan Johnson flips it back into the attacking zone as the White Bear Lake lines will change. Taken here now, Evan Murr. On to that far side. Further pass up ahead goes off the stick of the White Bear Lake Bears. And we're going to have a whistle, and that's a high, that's a high stick. The high sticking call coming. We're going to have a neutralized face off. Wiper Lake's just going to have to settle down here and just, you know, relax. Things are not right now going their way. But um, they're just going to have to settle down, relax, and just focus on their game and continue playing their game. Face off to the right of Tyler Steffens. 7.52 remaining shots on goal. White Bear Lake 23, Stillwater 13, 5 to 2 Bears in this period. Face off one by Stillwater, goes off the skates that time. The White Bear Lake students want the offsides, however that puck was onside. And now the Bears want a hooking penalty there, but they're not going to get it from the far sideline. The Ponies holding the puck in. Here onto the near side wing. Can be gotten further, pass all the way back to the far side as this is the first sustained attacking zone time the ponies have had in quite a while pass looking on the outlet for verkirky is no good it goes back here into the defensive zone for stillwater joe manning picked the puck back up in his own defensive zone going here near side as will be skated out on the attempt here by thomas lindeberg pass further up ahead through neutral ice into the attacking zone nice little wraparound attempt centered pass in front is no good that wraparound difficult to pull off successfully and it was not on that attempt Drive here from the point, fanned on. Now the Bears can start the rush back the other way. Here's Leighton Road, cutting back through center as the White Bear Lake lines change. He'll dump it in. A collision between two big bodies as Henry Lawrence in for the check for the Ponies. Back into the corner, Grant Hofeld trying to field the puck. Meanwhile, Lawrence can field it back down the length of the ice. No icing is called as there were players in the vicinity as it goes back to the White Bear Lake end. 6.40 remaining, 4-2 White Bear Lake leads. Bears led 3-1 after the first and 4-2 after the second. Back around as the ponies look to restart the rush back the other way. Cutting back now, Evan Murr. Murr will cut it back, skating through to center. He gains some speed across the blue line into the open ice area. Evan Murr, Murr tried the toe drag but defended well by the Bears as they collapsed around him. Shot from a sharp angle that time for Donar is no good. 
taken here behind the goal line. Trying to center in front that time was Murr, but it's taken away here by Tristan Johnson. Three on two rush for White Bear Lake if they hurry, and Rose will simply flip it wisely to the opposite corner here inside. Six minutes remaining to go in this third period. Winner again gets Hill Murray Friday night here at Aldrich Arena. It's puck taken away at the blue line. Ponies have to touch back up to get on side. Murky flips it off of the helmet that time of Sweetland. And the puck can be held in along the boards as Zach Kuyava in this third line for White Bear Lake will hold in play there. Chip back further now, Cade Cody Tech. Cody Tech off the end boards looking for Murky, but the pass intercepted by Tichito for Stillwater. And it's held in here by Tussie. Cody Tech takes it back away for White Bear Lake as he'll flip it back out through center onto the far sideline where Joe Manning goes to get it here for Stillwater. On the near side, Robert Dustin. Pass further up ahead. Could be taken further in as it's dumped back into the opposite goal line. As it'll be Robert Dustin to try to start the breakout here for Stillwater. Shower spins, he'll dump it in. Puck can be taken back further now. And a chance for Joe Manning. Manning knocked down right in front of the White Bear Lake bench. Bench, good check that time. Montgomery tried to outlet pass there, but he centered it in front off of Steffens. In front for a shot on goal, centering pass again. Spinning shot, hit blocked in front by Cody Tech. Cody Tech falls down, and the puck's still loose. Off the half wall, Tussie centering shot attempted that time. It'll be flipped out by Leighton Road. Here on the near side, big check that time from Road, and the Bears trying to clear it back out. Verkirke unable to fan on it. And the Bears can't hold it in. Steffens, oh, with the skate, the save on Tachino. Ring 10 bells on that save for Tyler Steffens, getting the skate on top of it. That was a pretty incredible save, just stretching out there and making that save. Uh, the Stillwater player wasn't all alone with him, too, and no defense to was around him until after the sh couple shots had gotten off. 4.24 remaining in this third period of play. Tyler Steffens certainly been active tonight. As the shots have not been many for Stillwater, but they have been very high quality. Allis flips for O'Brien here on the near on the far side. Hofeld trying to center it, turns it over. Pass into the skates that time of Allis. Steffens has to reach for it. We're going to get a little pushing and shoving out of this. Steffens' mask came off in that scrum. He's grabbing his wrist on the glove side. Yeah, temper, <laughs> tempers and emotions are definitely going to play right now. It's uh, We're getting down to the wire. Four minutes left, and Stillwater's going to be coming hard and pushing hard. Again, you see there the reach for Steffens. You see there he just reached back. 4.13 remaining. 4-2 White Bear Lake leads alongside Allison Volk. I'm Alex Westhead. You can follow Allison at Vogt Night. VOGT19 on Twitter. You can follow me at Alex Westad. Puck now and a chance here for Road as the Bears are on side. Road working through, shot looking low, uh, pad side. Goes wide left. Allis pinching down from the blue line. It goes all the way back here for Evan Murr, who fields it behind his own goal line. On to the far side now, Camden Benson off the head of Road into the White Bear Lake bench. Right in front of the assistant coach for White Bear Lake, Sean Patton. And we'll have a neutralized face-off here. Both teams have yet to use their timeout. Shots on goal, 23-15, White Bear Lake, 5-4 Bears in the third period. If you get a chance, follow us on social media at SEC TV or SEC TV Sports. Again, you see there the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube information. All of our games posted at youtube.com slash TV, so you can share them, especially when they are tape delayed, such as this, with friends, family, and neighbors. Stillwater with the puck. They'll flip it back out through the center, going back through neutral eye, so Brian flips it off the glass. New power into the attacking zone. Oh, a good defensive stick that time from Joe Manning as opponents rush three on two back through center ice. Some to the far side, Ronald Donar. Pass here in front from a sharp angle. Big juicy rebound off the leg pass of Steffens. Oh, and a good intercept that time by Brady O'Brien who flips it back through the center into the neutral zone area and all the way back for Joe Manning. Manning with the ponies having pulled the empty, the goalie for the extra attacker. Six men on the ice for Stillwater. As they're down two goals in their season on the line. Stillwater number two seed entering the section play. White Bear Lake the number three. Flip back out through center, Leighton Road. 
Lost the puck here. Ooh, in front looking for Tyler Steffen's leg pad, but it's not good enough. Held in here by Stillwater, centering pass in front. Oh, in the blue paint, it was loose before it was almost cleared out by Brady O'Brien. Down in the corner, Tussie working here for Roski on the far side. Poked away by Rode. Top it on the half wall. Rode trying to get it back through the center. He's able to do so down the length of the ice, wide to the right. It'll be icing and a face off back in the White Bear Lake end. I would not be surprised right now if Stillwater decided to take their time out to draw up a play. Um, they're going to have an offensive zone face off, so let's see what's going to happen. Head coach Greg Zanin making no signal as of yet. This would be the time to do it. Down two goals, 235 remaining. Shots on goal, 23-16, even at five apiece here in this third period. White Bear Lake looking to return to the section final for the third straight year. Stillwater has not qualified for the final since 2017 where they lost to the Hill Murray Pioneers in that final. They have not made the state tournament since 2016. Tied to the corner. Roski has a puck in his skates. Hofeld pins it up against the boards before it's able to be freed again here by Stillwater as Roski will hold it in on the end boards. Roski trying to free a great defense here from White Bear Lake. Centering pass in front, no receiver. Goes all the way back to the blue line. And further now for Camden Benson. Benson wristed shot through, hit a skate in front, flipped all the way out, down off a stanchion. Down the length of the ice, off the half wall. And down to the end boards where White Bear Lake will apply some pressure. Turnover. That time as Joe Manning lost the puck, he's able to pick it back up, and Grant Hofeld slowly to rejoin the play. Ooh, a turnover here now. Leighton Road almost had a chance to end it. Steffens has it off of his stick now. Further for Alas here. Minute 35 remaining. 4-2, centering pass in front. Unable to get it cleanly, centering pass in front. Big sweeping glove save for Tyler Steffens. Wow. That was a great just grab out of midair for Tyler Steff is just to snatch that puck like he's some type of cat or something. Tyler Steffens seeming to have returned to form that he had in the early part of the season. Before the calendar turned to 2020, he had a goals against average of 0.89 and a save percentage of 9.67 to lead the White Bear Lake Bears. And this will be the timeout as expected for Stillwater. But the Bears leading 4 to 2. The scoring summary 550 in the first period. Sam Newpower on the board. 1056, Grant Hofeld on the board. 1357, Billy Rose on the board for White Bear Lake. And Joe Manning, 1647 of the first, even strength goal. In the second period, 915, Grant Hofeld with his second. 1244, Stillwater. Ronnie Donar with his first goal of the game. That's how we got to 4-2. It's been a controversial third period. Again, you see the bracket. The winner of this one advances to play the Hill Murray Pioneers coming up on Friday night right here, Aldrich Arena. Tickets will be limited and will be available for a pre-sale tomorrow. Well, as you're watching this, Thursday from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. at Aldrich Arena. And if tickets are available, they'll be available for purchase on Friday at 1 p.m. until they are gone. This section routinely sells out, and there's no reason why it won't again. Stillwater is ready to go. Uh, they have their game plan, and it looks like they're ready just to get this going and try to put some uh, points up on the board. They just got to make sure to settle down, stick to what they, what they need to do, and keep putting pucks towards the net. White Bear Lake just needs to do what they've been doing on the penalty kill online. I mean, their penalty kill has been absolutely dominant tonight. Uh, uh, Stillwater has not had any like, really sustained pressure on it. So if White Bear Lake can, can continue to have that mentality, they'll be just fine. White Bear Lake 1 for 2 on the power play in this hockey game. Stillwater 0 for 2. We'll have a face-off of coming here to the right at Tyler Steffens. Both fans, student sections on their feet. Allison pointing something out. The clock. Oh, the clock. They have to put 129 back on the clock as they had put three minutes up for a timeout. They have 12.9 on the clock. Yes, they have 12.9 seconds on the clock there we as go. it stands. Now it's corrected to 129. So the face off here to the right. Swung by the Bears, almost on Steffens. As will be ringed around by O'Brien. It's held in right by Manning. Puck back through out to into the defensive zone as it was an off delayed offsides down the length of the ice wide to the left and there'll be another face off in the white bear lake end with a minute 17 remaining if you're the stillwater head coach greg zanin in his first year what's your play off the draw 
play off the draw. Win it back to your defenseman and set up your set up your power play, set up your six man power play essentially, and give yourself a chance to get a high quality chance. Don't just you know don't just throw the play the puck. Don't just throw it on the net for the sake of throwing it on the net. White Bear Lake has a draw here to the left of Tyler Steffens. It's won by the Bears. We're gonna have a whistle as the puck was dropped unfairly, or it would appear instead that the Stillwater faceoff man Henry Lawrence was in too soon. He would be replaced with Tussie. The face off. One by the Bears. They'll flip it back out off the stick that time of Murr. Shot through traffic. It's held in by Steffens. Puck still loose before it's up off the glass and down into the length of the ice. It goes back into the still under defensive end where it can be reset by Joe Manning. Pass through the center. Through neutral. Down and low inside the last minute of play in the section semifinal game. We're glad that you have been able to watch it. We're going to have a whistle. That should be icing back the other way, I think. Yep. So we'll see if Logan, Logan Bees will come out. He'll return to his net. 54 seconds remaining. Face off of coming to the right of Bees. Shots on goal currently 23 18, 7 to 5, favoring the Ponies in the period. 23 18, favoring White Bear Lake overall. Both teams penalized three times for a total of six minutes each. Face off to the left of Bees. It's won by the Ponies. Again, as soon as they get possession through neutral ice, into the skates this time of Fratellone. Onside is the play as Bees will have to retreat back to his net, set down the length of the ice on goal, and Bees will have to make the stop. Now headed to the net is a Stillwater netminder. The Ponies down two goals. Nice little spin move that time from Joe Manning as they'll carry back through to center. Cross neutral ice. Here's Henry Lawrence. Lawrence trying to work in. Goes here for Tichito, centering pass in front. Steffens right, and they score. Wow, I'm not sure how that squeaked in. So the puck squeaks through Tyler Steffens. And earlier in the season when these two teams played each other, there were a pair of goals in the last minute for the Bears that allowed the game to head to overtime. It would appear that Stillwater looks to be on the same path as we'll get a good view at it here from our goal line camera. And again, you just see it squeaks through there, right through the five hole. And that brings the score to four to three. White Bear Lake leads. We'll have a face off here at center ice. The goal vacated once again for Logan Bees. Face off one by White Bear Lake sent down. Montgomery, thank you very much. So much for that. As into the open net, Joe Montgomery ends the season for the Stillwater Ponies and the Bears lead 5-3. That's a great face off win by White Bear Lake. Making in the put. What he did a really good job of is making sure he's over that red line, so if he missed, it wasn't going to be an icing call. Um, that's huge. I know a lot of guys and girls get really excited when they see that open end and just want to throw it down there. Uh, but it's really important to get over that red line to make sure there's no icing and to waste time off the clock. So Logan Bees will be out of the net again. So they'll look for the extra attacker. Whistle blows. And for White Bear Lake, 23 seconds away from another date with the Hill Murray Pioneers. We set it back in December. Would we really expect anything else? Through neutral ice. Stengel forced back in his own defensive zone up further ahead for Manning around his stick. Montgomery able to play it back further. Goes all the way back out through the center, down the length of the ice. Ten seconds remaining in the hockey game. Going back to get it now and a chance here for Henry Lawrence. Through neutral ice into the attacking zone. Noah Tussie centering pass. Stefan steers it to the opposite corner. And as, it, as the clock hits zeros here, we're going to have a little something extra. And for White Bear Lake, a return to the section final game against their crosstown rival, the Hill Murray Pioneers. A little bit extra after the whistle. As again, these two teams, a budding rivalry between them. Now they have to line up and shake hands. And for White Bear Lake, Nobody came in expecting the White Bear Lake Bears to win this contest, but a dominant effort through the first two periods. Stillwater doing a nice job to respond. But for the Stillwater Ponies, a heartbreaking end of their season. Yes, it's always tough, especially for the seniors. Um, when your season ends, it's something that you know you work so hard for, for you know four or five years uh, to be on to be on this team, and it creates definitely like a brotherhood. Um, but definitely nothing to hang their heads about. They played a, a really good game and they had a really good season. Meanwhile, on the other side of the ice for White Bear Lake, headed back again to the section final to face off against the Hill Murray Pioneers. Allison, you've seen that matchup once already this season. It was a back and forth stressful affair. 
What do you expect out of it this time? Uh, well, I expect you to maybe have a heart attack. Um, I expect it to be a very good back and forth game. I expect it to be close. Um, I expect it to be something that uh, each team's going to come in with extreme intensity. And I expect this crowd just to be full of energy and, and to be loud in here. Again, in the event that you're watching this tomorrow, the pre-sale for tickets was from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. as this will air for the first time on February 27th. So the pre-sale was there. If any tickets are available, they will be for sale Friday, February the 28th from 1 p.m. until the doors open at 6 o'clock. They will be sold until the tickets are gone. And yes, they will be gone. Well, before we head home, final thoughts. Final thoughts, I thought it was a good game. I thought White Bear Lake uh, had a lot of push on them. They never did let their foot off the gas. I thought Stillwater also gave a good push back in that they, did, they didn't give up. They just kept pushing. They had the belief that they were going to be able to come back and win. Uh, but White Bear Lake did a great job of making sure that didn't happen. The final score for tonight's contest, White Bear Lake advances to face off against Hill Murray. Bears five. Stillwater Ponies three. Final shots on goal in the contest were 25-21 in favor of the Bears. For Arlen Becker, David Schuyler, and our entire SCC TV production crew, for Allison Vogt, I'm Alex Westhead. This is your home for White Bear Lake Boys Hockey.